Hello and welcome back to another segment of Snack Time featuring Keandre Coburn, the star actually, Keandre Coburn. First of all, congratulations on your win. The beat against Louisiana 38 to 18. How are you for starters? Um, I'm very excited, uh, very happy, very pumped, but also humble at the same time because we beat a very good team um, in the opener. Um, and as you see in the opener in college right now, a lot of teams have lost their first game. Uh, a lot of top ranked teams have lost their first game to where I feel like we were tried with a great team and to see how our team is right now, starters, uh, I'm really kind of excited for because I mean, we played against a good opponent, and the fact that we performed the way we did um, just puts a lot of, like, what is, like, you know, like, like something special here. So, I mean, we're just taking it week by week, day by day, pretty much to where, you know, they're off the table now. It's so on to the next. But uh, I'm very excited. I woke up happy. Um, went to the tra- went to the, um, the facility to get a little stretch in, work out. And I was excited. Everybody moved, was happy. I mean, you like seeing that after a win, after a good win on a good opponent, week one. You know what I mean? We, we want to know right now. So, I mean, I feel really good, and I'm just excited for the next. I'm excited for you guys. You said you went to the field house and did some stretching, a little bit of workouts today? Yeah, uh, we had an opportunity to do stretch and stride. Uh, what we do is pretty much stretch out all the toxins from stuff from the game before, get a little soreness out. Um, and that really helps a lot. Um, got a little massage in, um, massage in my, you know, my body. Felt really good. I slobbered a lot on a little table, probably I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a little workout in. Um, and then... Now I'm here, you know, and so just the rest of the day is kind of chill, relax. Um, I got some assignments to do in class, you know, school will never over, especially. I uh, might catch in and watch the Notre Dame game, or I might go see the movie. I might go see the movie today. So just on my little time to chill, relax time. You're calm, cool, and collected because you know that you guys just won by 20 points. You guys know that the long camp, and the endless hours that you guys spent, you know, in the training room, during workouts, just team meetings, film, paid off. Yeah. Did this give you a little bit more trust in Coach Sarkeesian? Um, most definitely, because um, like, I, like I said, like we've been training with this this staff for nine months. And, you know, they always telling us this, telling us that this is going to work, this is going to work. And so in my head, I'm like, you know, I believe you. Honestly, you came from a winning program. Y'all are winners. Y'all know how to win. So it's like you bringing us a different style and telling us what we have to do. And so that's all we could do was trust and believe because we couldn't, like, doubt you. So then going into week one and playing and seeing how everything that y'all taught us, everything y'all trained, everything y'all put into us, everything y'all told us what we had to do work. I mean, that's all you can do is be like, now I'm constantly just going to believe and trust and follow along the ride because – Look, they work, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm very intrigued, and I trust them with all I can. And so I'm just – whatever they tell us to do, we, we're going to do. I think that was the mentality for a lot of the fans, too, including me and Anwar when we had our post-game show. We were – you know how it is. You're a vet. We had a little bit of PTSD from the old Texas, but we know Coach Sarkeesian is coming from a powerhouse of a school, Alabama – and a powerhouse of a coach, Nick Saban. And I think everybody was very interested interested to see how he would pull those same teachings over to you guys and just sharpen up you guys' skills. The technicality was absolutely there. He seemed calm, cool, and collected, just like you. It seemed like you guys were finally playing like we're winners, and we know that we are. We're not just out here trying to be winners, you know? So it definitely looked like you guys – put the work in and all else paid off. Now, what were some of the highlights for you on the offense side and the defense side? Like just um, some of your teammates. Yeah. Seeing, seeing the offense performing, they did um, B John for sure. Everybody, you know, that's number one. Um, he did his thing, um, catching the ball, running, not getting tackled. It was sometimes you'd be like, okay, he got tackled. Next, you know, he get up running. And I'm like, you know, same B. John. We, I seen it all the time, so I know what he's capable of doing. But the fact to see that against other people. And then um, Jay Witt, my dog, 
literally broke somebody's ankles in the game. Literally broke somebody's ankles. And he did. Crunches. And so he did a great job and, you know, celebrating him. And then you got other people like Hustle Carr, you know, his first start, first performance as a quarterback at the University of Texas pretty much. And you can see how calm he was and poised and just how he wanted to dominate and make plays. And he did, did exactly what he was supposed to do. I mean, even Casey got in and made the plays that he was supposed to make. Um, and just so his team, all them cats on the offensive side, just and O-line just dominated the team, all of them playing to where – how I see it every day in fall camp. For nine months, what I have been seeing, seeing them display was amazing. Then on the defensive side, you got Ovi making sacks. You got Luke, you know, first start as a linebacker, walk on – that's the starting linebacker at the University of Texas, balling, um, Demo, balling. And so, you know, like, even with me, like, as a D-lineman, our performances wasn't as high as we wanted to be because, I mean, certain games, you're not going to get the plays that you want because that's just how it is. Offense game plan to get, you know, to do stuff. So just seeing that whatever I can do to help make people get plays is just, it helps me out because I, I just want to win. Mm-hmm. And so I don't care about the stats. I don't even care if I get no stats. It's just, I want to win. So seeing all them cats ball out and do their thing, it was just amazing because we've been doing that all camp. And so, it just put a smile on my face, and so I know it put a smile on their face, and it, the fans were happy. I was happy, so we were all happy as a, as a as a unit, to be honest. And what do you think for yourself? Because I know we talked about personal goals before. What do you think you could have done better in this game? Um, I mean, it's always things you can do better. I probably should execute it. Um, mm-hmm. probably you know certain plays not be high, not do that. But I mean, that's the thing in football. You're not perfect. Um, you're going to make mistakes, and it's good to make mistakes so you get to learn so you won't do it again in the future. So, I mean, all we're going to do is get in this tape, execute what we got to do better as a unit, as a as a position, and me as myself, what can I do better? Do I got to change the routine? Do I got to do this different? Do I got to do that different? But, I mean, at the end of the day, we got to go. So, I'm happy for that because um, you, you nobody played well to what they think. You know, everybody have errors, and so you fix some errors in and then you just do better from that. So, I mean, my goal was to get a dub. That was my number one goal, was to get a dub with my team, whatever I have to do. So, that reached my goal right there. So, let's just on to the next. On to the next. Seeing some of the Big 12 teams play, of course, you know, you guys are playing also. But seeing the scores, Iowa State beat Northern Iowa by this much. Also, Oklahoma struggled against Tulane. Just seeing those teams that have normally been powerhouses and have been good competition for Texas, do you feel any more motivation seeing them struggle? How? What are you? What's your take on it? No, I mean, in college, I feel like everybody. You got to think about this is Division One, so everybody in Division One college, college period got there for a reason because they they're good so i don't care what school it is north iowa Tulane, everybody's good everybody has a chance to win because everybody does the same thing we all go to fall camp we all train all season so i feel like you never sleep on nobody because everybody is anything can happen so i don't take them i take them as that's as at the end of the day it's a win uh i don't care if it's this close that big, it's a win. So I mean, you dominate. I mean, you do everything you can to get that done. That's all that matters. Cause that's what coaches tell us. Like it doesn't matter at the end of the day of the score what it is. You win. That's what matters. Cause the wins helps you out in the future. But I take it as I mean, they just want to get good, good teams. I mean, for us, it's a season opener to where everybody had weeks to prepare for each other. So to where you, knew, I know your game plan from the back of my hand. So. I mean, I just take it as everybody, everybody in college, everybody's in college, division one, everybody's good. So everybody, I just take, I don't take nothing lightly. Everybody has talent. Anything can happen. Absolutely. Everybody's good. I think that's a great modest answer. Everybody is good. This is division one college. However, when you have these teams that are known for being dominant, yes, they have lost a lot of players to the draft, but the way you're supposed to just turn over and the way you're supposed to bounce back after that, I don't know if we saw it from those teams. They weren't looking like themselves, if I should say that. But Texas, on the other hand, was looking like a completely different team and playing up to their expectations and playing very dominant. So that's why I was more so just wanting to know your thoughts on it. Because when you see, well, especially for me, if I see my competition having a race that is not normally like them, you know, I like to think like, okay, well, what's going on? Are they not the same person that they, so that's, 
That was my take on it. But if you say you're just, your eye is on the prize, they won and that's what matters. They're still going to be the same person <laughs> and that's what it's going to be. Okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's just because uh, we got to think about it like, I mean, it's the season open. Like, it's a lot of teams with one L's that still make it to the national championship that make it to the playoffs because, I mean, it's a starter. Like, last year, um, Iowa State lost to Louisiana first game, went through the Big 12 and dominated. Oklahoma lost two games. You know, they were one and three, one and three or one and two, whatever it was, and dominated and won a Big 12. So you never take them first first games because, yeah, think about it. You know what your team is, but you don't really know what your team is to really middle of the season. So you're – the first few games, you're trying to you're trying to get a, a act for what do we have? What's our weakness? What's our strength? So, I mean, you're really not a real team till I want to say quarter of the season because that's when you actually know what you have. So, I mean, it was just the two two teams battle out, and you know, stuff happens. Stuff things happen. It probably didn't go the way that you wanted to go. You're gonna miss a lot of tackles because you really haven't been tackling nobody. You've been tackling each other. You're not really trying to hurt each other. So, I mean, things happen. So you, you just. I really don't count this first stage. Of the, I mean, it's really important. Every stage is really important in college. But right now, this stage really going to determine how a team will really be because team might look this way right now. They might have had a close game against somebody, you know, that they were supposed to be. But midway in the season, they're a different team. They adjust to different. They change things, put somebody in different spots. So mm -hmm. I really don't take it. I just take it each. That's what I'm saying. I take it week by week. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's the only mindset I have for that. And would you give that same model, that same statement? I think it's a great statement. You never really know, basically, is what you're saying. It's just game one. Would you take that same statement and apply it to Texas? Winning yeah. by 20 points, dominating, but it's just the first game. Would you take uh, that to Texas? I don't want to say – I mean, I say yes in a way of we, we're taking it as we were supposed to do that. We okay. knew in the in the in the program that that's what we want to do. We want to dominate, and so if we say that we that's what we want to do, we're going to do that because we believe and we trust in our system and our staff that everything that we know that we are capable of doing, we can do on the field. So that was our plan. That was our goal was to dominate, and I felt like that's what we did. So that's what we do. If we say we're going to do something, we're going to, we're going to try to we're going to try to do it to the point that that's what we're supposed to do. So. That's what that's what we did. That's what's done. So now that's 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 off the table. That's out the way. We're not worried about that no more. So now we're we're worried about what's next, and that's Arkansas. So we go come in as a game plan. Whatever we say as a game plan, whatever we say as a team, that's what we're gonna, that's what we're going to try to do. Then we're going to have to trust into our coach and our staff that that's what we're going to do. I like that. Now since games have started, I have started to like our interviews more and more. Snacks. I started to like. Our more and more you talk with someone's intention now because you backed it up and the whole team backed it up and I'm really interested to see how the game goes against Arkansas because they were another one of the teams where they didn't look as strong as they usually do but they ended up pulling away in the end but like you said never doubt anybody and I think that that's a great mentality to have a lot of the time you know I'm just watching from the stands but a lot of the time when I would be an angry Texan <laughs> at the football games you know, I would see sometimes the way the team doubts certain teams. But now I feel like Coach Sarkeesian has just changed you guys' mindset. It doesn't matter who it is. You know, we're going to play like this is the national championship every single time and move with intention. And that's what exactly what you guys did. But how – I want to take it all the way back, though. What was the atmosphere for you? Just take it back from stepping off the bus – at Bevo Boulevard, to going into the locker room, to just the field. Take me through it. Take me through it. If I couldn't see, you need to just – let's do some imagery here. It's like that's why you you do this. That's why you committed to University of Texas. That's why I committed to University of Texas, uh, was having a team, having a state, having support for the team that you chose to be at and seeing all the love. I mean, that's everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, uh, people have love in different – all these schools have love, but it's like something different at the University of Texas to where um, it just put another, like, excitement inside of me as soon as I stepped on the bus. Uh, when I hopped on the bus, I was hyped. I was just hyped because, like, I've been through this. Uh, I know what it takes. I'm just happy to be back in college football again. Uh, we worked so hard in all season. For nine months, I felt like I was working forever. I feel like it was no day off. 
to where now it's like now I'm taking all that stress and I put it in that on the field to where I can perform now. So when I hopped on the bus um, and we were going, I was just excited. I was listening to the new Drake. Uh, shout out to Drake. You know, it was. It What's was, your favorite song on there? Because now I have to ask. Uh, I like the one with Little Baby. But I like the one I'm too sexy. You know, I like that one. Way too sexy. That. Future, I love that. <laughs> cool, but then I like the one with Twenty One Savage. Uh, I think that's more of a to give me. Oh, the knife talk one. <laughs> it's, it's a little too dark, but I like the one with Little Baby. I like that one a lot. But it was just all of it. I was listening to the Drake. I was getting all hype. Uh, I was sitting next to Demo. Me and Demo, I guess, will be new seat bus bus buddies. Um, <laughs> so I'm sitting next to him, and we we jamming, and uh. Just, just driving and you see all the fans, you see how packed city of Austin was, you know? Driving, we get to the little Bevo and we see the fans and I'm just sitting and I'm hyped and I'm screaming on the bus like, let's go, you know, it's game day. And everybody just looking, everybody getting all hyped. So we got the bus, you know, I'm all in my little black suit, looking clean. Um, and I'm just seeing all the fans and it's just like, it's a lot of people where you see, you can't really point out who you're looking at because there's so many people in the same colors. And it's just screaming, they support, they happy. And everybody's like, it's like college football back again because last year it wasn't like that, COVID, you know? And so it just felt good. It felt like, it's like hard to explain how it feel. It's like, I, I, like I said, it's, like, it's really hard to explain how that feeling is, but you just got to be there to understand. So yeah, you're walking down, still listening to my Drake, looking at the people, I don't know what they probably saying, I'm just throwing my hookup sign, happy, walking into the locker room, getting dressed, going in the field, and just seeing the, the stadium just beautiful again. You know, you just seeing orange and white, 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 to where you can't point out nobody. I ain't know where my family mm -hmm. was at all. <laughs> um, and I'm just looking, I'm just running out, it's just excitement. It's like UT fans, UT atmosphere, just UT period. It puts another energy in you when you're an athlete at the UT, especially supporting UT. It's like you got that spirit. It's like Bebo that's with you. So, I mean, I was excited the whole time. I was happy. I never had my face down. I never was mad. never was sad. Um, I was more excited than anything. I think I was probably too excited um, <laughs> in, in a way. But, I mean, it was just being back. It felt good being back home. I could just say that. It was home again. I Coming out of our locker room this time, it felt like it was home because we wasn't in our locker room last year. So it felt like home. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I think the word I used to describe it was just nostalgic. Nostalgic is basically just the where you feel at home. You know, you have you ever like smelled something that just smells so familiar, but you can't put your finger on it, but you just know that it took you straight back to your childhood. That's kind of how I describe describe the atmosphere of Bebo Boulevard and seeing the stands. And watching from the press box, I was just kind of like, are people going to show up? Because it was around 2.30. I'm looking at Anwar. Like, are people really going to fill up the stands? Is it going to be full capacity? Like, they say it could be full capacity, but people might still be, you know, a little bit hesitant because of COVID. Watching. And then 3.10 hits. And I see all of the Hellraisers and the students, yes. But it still it was kind of still scattered a little bit. And you guys came out to do your stretches. You know, they got you guys hyped up. But I'm still looking around like I still see so many seats open. This is the type of game is going to be. Okay, it's fine. I understand. You know, things are a little bit risky still with COVID. But I don't know what happened. I, like, looked down and take some notes about some things that were coming up. And I looked up, and it was 91,000 people in yeah. the stands. And like, that's I think that's what um, – <laughs> that was the number. It was, like, 91,337 people in the stands that's not, even, that's not even max and that's not even max i was so excited for you guys the hypeness i saw on the sidelines from y'all it just like it made me just want to go on the field and just start screaming <laughs> it was great but i think a good word to describe it is just nostalgic but like, this is exactly how it should be college football is back and it's better than ever what did you do to celebrate just to wrap things up uh what well, I need to celebrate? It's okay uh, to tell me. You can tell uh, me. Uh, nah. Um, we do. So after that, I had interviews, um, post game stuff the whole time. And after that, uh, my family was out here. My uh, uncle, my aunt, my cousin, my grandma was out there. So we went to go eat. I went to go eat at this burger place. Uh, 
And I want to give a shout out to the burger place. But I forgot what the burger place is called. If what I got was my, it? Oh, uh, man, what was it called? It was. I guarantee I can name it. <laughs> uh, let me let me look at it right now. I'm so sorry. But it was good. It was notable. I never heard of it. Really? Go eat it. It was great. It was delicious. You Wait, where me? was it? I missed it. Hop Daddy's Hop. I was gonna guess that Hop Daddy. I was gonna guess Hop Daddy. I cannot believe you never heard of that. Hop Daddy is the best burger place to eat in Austin. Never been there. Uh, I think just, I'm basic. I'm a basic eater. Um, I'm a very, very. I like to eat. Like I hate to try new things, and if it's nasty, I'm gonna be really mad. Me too. So I, I like to go for what I'm. I know. So I ate it. Uh, and it was really delicious. Shout out to them. Um, it was it was great. I really enjoyed my burger. And after that, I came back to the crib. Um, listen to some more Drake. Uh, I'll tell you that. I've been listening to Drake now. I'll stop. I don't know why. And hung out with my dudes, man. We celebrated together. We celebrated the team. Um, that's it was something to celebrate. Uh, awesome. it was a great celebration. Uh, and I really enjoyed it uh, with them. So it was good for you. And I'm happy you got to try Hop Daddy. Hop Daddy's great. I think it was the first restaurant I went to since being in Austin, like as a freshman and love it. It's great. And they're very generous with their fries. And that's what I like. <laughs> I had ordered, you know, I ain't want a lot of fries. I ordered like the small fries, my small fries, are like a big fry. So. Yeah, it was a bowl. <laughs> Hopefully Hop Daddy sees this and they give us a partnership. <laughs> it's Chick-fil-A, man. I'm done with them. Hey. <laughs> I, you asked for a large fry, a large, the little fry looks bigger than the large fry. <laughs> they do it, they give you them big waffle fries this big. And think, <laughs> not right. I want all my fries in there. They're all stingy. The <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, snacks. Snacks said he needs his snacks. <laughs> well, you guys are facing Arkansas next week. It's an away game. Any message to the Arkansas Razorbacks? I mean, uh, nothing, nothing too extreme. I mean, you know, just prepare. We're coming. We're ready. Uh, and I mean, it's football. I mean, it is what it is. You know, you know what we're supposed to do. Uh, y'all better come with your best shot. Come, come ready. Cause I mean, we are. We're gonna come ready. We're gonna come ready to play. Um, and hopefully, it's a game to where we both eye to eye. Uh, wish nothing but luck to y'all. And um, we're coming soon. All gas, no breaks. Thank you for joining me for another segment of Snack Time. Free cheering me, your host, Serenity Douglas, to the star himself, Keandre Coburn, a.k.a. Snacks. Thank you so much. Thank you.